Well, my friends, it has certainly been a crazy week in the world of Android. We not only got the official release of Android 16 as it's finally here, but the June feature drop also came as well. And to my surprise, we also got the Android 16 QPR1 beta 2 update, which, hey, there is so much here, but I am not complaining one bit. I've been super excited to see what Google's been working on, and this beta I've been anxiously waiting for since the first one back in mid-May, so this is a welcome surprise to say the least. Thankfully for you guys, over the past few hours, the 9to5Google team and I have been busy installing this new update on our devices and digging through all the changes you need to know about. And real quick, I want to give you a rundown on everything new because there are a few exciting things that we certainly need to talk about. Getting right into it, probably the first and biggest change is a developer preview of enhanced Android desktop experiences within connected displays. And that's really just a fancy way of saying Android 16 now has its own version of a desktop PC interface, a lot like we've seen with Samsung DeX in years past. What makes this so interesting actually is that Google is making a point saying that they are collaborating directly with Samsung using DeX as the foundation for this enhanced desktop windowing experience. I have to say, it is genuinely awesome to see Google embracing features from other big Android manufacturers, and I genuinely hope this is a trend we see a lot more of in the future, as it's a win for the entire Android ecosystem. Regardless, it's still the very early days, so think of this not anywhere close to a full review, but just a quick first impression of the feature as it stands in QPR 1 Beta 2. With this new desktop windowing feature, users with a Pixel 8 or 9 series device can connect to an external monitor using a display port. For now, you will have to activate it in the developer options, but once you do, your connected display will now feature a taskbar that shows your running and pinned apps. The windows on this connected display are freely resizable, and you can run apps side by side just like you would on a traditional desktop. And if you're using this feature with a tablet, the desktop session is extended across both screens, creating one continuous system. This means you can freely switch apps, move content, and drag your mouse cursor between the tablet and connected display, which is a really nice seamless touch and something sorely needed in Android for quite some time. The why behind this is where things get truly interesting in my book. Keep in mind, I'm trying to connect the dots here, but I do think this has a lot to do with Android's big push for adaptability within apps as of late. At Google I.O., they've been seriously pushing developers hard to start building their apps for both phones and large screen devices, and implementing this feature is a really good way to incentivize them. To me, if I were a developer, knowing my large screen apps will now be used on smartphones in this new desktop environment is a huge deal. It benefits the entire ecosystem, as tablet apps will suddenly have a much wider user base, not to mention with the persistent rumors that Google is planning to replace Chrome OS with Android, plus the upcoming Android XR launch, this connected display feature seems like a critical piece to push that initiative forward. To me, I think the long-term goal is to have as many of these large screen apps on as many devices as possible, from Android XR that will no doubt take advantage of these bigger apps, to Android Auto, to tablets of course, and the future of this Chrome OS plus Android merger. From my perspective, they're effectively future-proofing Android with this feature. There is so much much potential, no questions asked, and I cannot wait to see how it evolves. So please, by the way, do me a favor and subscribe to the channel because we will 100% be covering any updates on this, and I do not want you to miss out on any of it. So, desktop windowing is by far the biggest new feature you should know about, but like with all these betas we cover on the channel, there are always a few smaller changes you can look out for. For one, Google did some general polishing of the Material 3 Expressive UI. The sliders in general got a bit of a tweak, as we now have some slightly altered icons for some of the UI elements, and now most, if not all of the identifying icons are moved to the far right of these sliders. This is most noticeable with the brightness and volume sliders in particular, which now also have a subtle animation plus a little color theme change when you go to full volume for those icons. There are also new sliders throughout the sound and vibration section of the settings menu as well. And actually, the sound and vibration section as a whole has been somewhat redesigned. They've grouped together some options that seem to be related to each other, which is a nice little touch for organization. I should also mention they adjusted the storage bar to show the thicker new Material 3 aesthetic, kind of adding to the changes I mentioned a moment ago with the 
brightness and volume slider bars. Another small change is that there is now more vibrant theming in the media player, so the album art itself is a bit brighter and the matching color theme should now show more dramatic, bolder colors instead of the more muted versions we had in a previous beta, which I also think is a nice touch. It is worth mentioning that we have the new Google logo visible in QPR1 beta 2. You can see it now in the pixel launcher search bar, both on the home screen and inside the app list when you swipe up, which is good for adding continuity. And lastly, for changes in the wallpaper and style section, there is now a new animated tab called Wallpaper Studio, which I think looks great by the way. It seems like Google will be putting their wallpaper effects in here for the foreseeable future. Right now, all we have is the live effects option, which brings you to your gallery so that you can pick your photo and engage in that wallpaper effect customization that was added in that previous beta. To me, this is actually a big deal as they need to make it as easy as possible for the average consumer to access this portion of the customization, so this should hopefully streamline things a little bit. As a whole, those are the biggest changes we saw in Android 16 QPR 1 Beta 2, mostly just some minor tweaks and aesthetic changes. I do wish that there were more here, but I'd say Google is in the refining stages right now for Material 3 Expressive, trying to find out what aspects fit best, where, and making sure that they are maximizing the design language. And after what seems like a big point of contention with Apple's liquid glass, I've seen so much backlash against that, and rightfully so, honestly. I'd say Google is far ahead of the game here. I don't think they'll have to do any sweeping changes or big overhaul like Apple most likely will have to do. From here on out, it's more about tweaking Material 3 Expressive in the core operating system to get it to a state of perfection, so ultimately, I'm excited to see where things go from here. Also, I should mention that it was reported that there are a few bug fixes in this update as well. There's a fix for auto dark theme not working, now playing crashing when selecting a track, the camera frequently failing to launch, shortcuts for newly downloaded apps not not being automatically added to the home screen, the home button not working on the app list UI, the more wallpapers button being misaligned in the wallpaper settings, and Gemini failing to work on the lock screen. These are all little small bug fixes that should make the experience a lot smoother. Right now, I'm currently not daily driving a device using this new Material 3 Expressive update yet because I want Google to iron out all the kinks, but after this update, I might consider. But with all that said, I'm gonna leave it over to you guys now. I would love to hear your thoughts on this update. What do you think of this new desktop windowing mode? Do you think these QPR betas are bringing Android 16 in the right direction? Let me know down in the comments below as I'm always super curious to see what the Android community is thinking. In the meantime, I'm getting out of here. Until the next one, this has been Jordan Floyd with 9to5Google. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you later.